Clear, Katari? Can you hear me clearly? Okay, sekarang boleh dengar, Prof? Boleh dengar, eh? Yeah? I try share screen eh. Uh, boleh Prof, try share screen Prof. Oh, banyak sangat dokumen I. Nanti nak tutup dokumen I. Ya lah. Oh, kan selalu kita boleh isi kan. Ada tangan dokumen mengganggu. Nenek saya ni. Apa nampak? Try. Ayah. Ah boleh ya? Eh? Nah boleh. Ah boleh. Okay. Hmm. Yo duduk kat mana? Semua dekat library. Ya, alhamdulillah. Saya dekat office uh, apa tu? Uh, research support section uh, and the rest dekat what we call it uh, meeting room. <laughs> oh, semua duduk masing-masing lah. Hmm. Hmm, I ingat kan nak mari juga, nak datang juga UIA. Tapi hmm. tak apalah. <laughs> Uh, prof ke, Assalamualaikum Prof. Sekejap eh Prof, kami ada uh, tengah ada technical error sekejap. Ada apa? Uh, tengah betulkan sekejap Prof. Technical error? Uh -uh. Uh, tapi Prof okey. Uh, prof dengan uh, Puan Aziza uh, okey. Cuma kami je lah. Hmm. Sekejap eh Prof. Ya, ya, ya. Dia macam silau sebelah sini kan? Tingkap. Ah, ah, nampak Tengkap. macam ada nur di situ. <laughs> kan? Saya nak tutup langsir. Cuba saya tutup langsir. Is that better? Sama je kan? Hmm. Okey lah, ya. Okey je lebih kurang je. Lebih kurang je, Prof. Lebih kurang. Tapi okey lah tu. Dia silau tingkap tu. Prof kat Malaysia ke kat mana? Ha? Prof kat Malaysia ke kat mana? Ha, ah, dekat rumah anak saya. Oh. Dekat bilik anak saya. Masih saya bertikal lagi kan? Ha, masih. Dia macam silau dia tu lah macam sebab tu dia dia orang selalu pakai special lampu kat depan mungkin sebab belakang prof gelap jadi apa screen mon screen laptop tu dia nampak nampak oh, tutup lampu agak ni kita tutup lampu yang atas ni kot maybe kot betul-betul dalam gelap eh cerai ya tapi memang video betul 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 Dah sepuluh kan? Better? Uh, Sembilan lima satu. Sama je? Ah, yes. Ah, tapi cerah. Better. Saya rasa ni nampak cerah muka Prof nampak cerah sikit. Daripada tadi? Mm -mm, betul betul. Dalam gelap belah mananya? Dia kena duduk dalam gelap. <laughs> kena romantik. <laughs> I stop share. Nak nak Uh, sama je dia on the reading class tu dia nampak gelap kan? Mm, yes. 
Okey, Prof Ida, Pendam Siti Aziza dan semua silakan. Silakan live ya. Kita amu ah record. You all nak stop pukul 10 kan? Apa betul. Kita nak start montage Prof. YouTube tu. YouTube kalau suara mati kan boleh. Dia dah habis ya. Have you ever wondered how to download and share digital content legally? How do you let people know that you want them to reuse your own work? Creative Commons licenses can help you do both. We'll show you how. Our world's exploded with digital opportunities. Now we can communicate, share and work together using the exceptional distribution network that is the Internet. Information and content can fly between us in exciting new ways. But it's important to know that when something is created, say a photo, a document or a music track, it's automatically protected by copyright. Copyright enables people to say who can share and reuse their creations. You must always obtain someone's permission before sharing or reusing their work, even when it's posted online. But what if a creator wants everyone to use their work, without the hassle of granting permission over and over? This is where Creative Commons can help. Creative Commons provides licensing tools that are free to use. You can apply a license to your work, which refines your copyright and streamlines how you give permission. Zach here downloads a photo called CC Kiwi that he wants to use in his science project. He can do this without asking Kiri, the photographer first, because she's already given permission with a Creative Commons license. Kiri's license is legally robust, but easy for Zach to understand. She's told the world, including Zach, that they can use CC Kiwi as long as they acknowledge her as the original photographer. There are more rules Kiri could have included. Creative Commons licenses are made up of license elements. You can think of them as rules, and each have their own special symbol. This is attribution. It means that Zach must acknowledge Kiri when he publishes his science project containing her photo. This is non-commercial. It means no one else but Kiri is permitted to make money from CC Kiwi. Tim wants to print the photo onto t-shirts and distribute them to friends. He can do this, but he must not sell them. This is no derivatives, and it means that Kiri hasn't given permission to change her photo. Kate can use CC Kiwi on her design blog, but will need to ask Kiri before retouching or mixing up the image. And this is share alike. It means new creations that use CC Kiwi need to carry the same license. Jack incorporates his own remix of CC Kiwi in his video installation, but he must share the work under the same terms that Kiri has. Each Creative Commons license gives permission to share and includes the attribution rule. So people who find your Creative Commons licensed work are automatically allowed to share it, but are required to acknowledge you if they do. The other three license elements are optional, and you can choose which ones to add, if any. Here are the six combinations that make up Creative Commons licenses. The difference between them is how many rules apply when someone wishes to use your work. The Attribution License allows reusers the most freedom, and the Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License allows the least freedom. The Attribution License and the Attribution Share Alike Licenses are sometimes referred to as Free Cultural Works Approved Licenses. These three licenses restrict commercial use of a work.
and these two licenses do not give permission for adapting or remixing. These two licenses require new works to be licensed under the same terms. To choose and apply one of these licenses, and to view their terms in more detail, visit us at creativecommons.org.nz or you can answer some questions to help you decide which license best suits your needs at creativecommons.org slash choose. There are some good ways to find other people's Creative Commons licensed work online. You can use a search filter by going to the Creative Commons website. Or why not try the Gemendo website for music, Flickr for images, or Digital NZ for New Zealand content. Using Creative Commons licenses could help your creations reach more people. Maybe you want to connect with others across the globe and take turns at improving a report. Or maybe you just want to have fun remixing someone else's work. Whatever reason you have to share your work, you'll find there are scientists, educators, companies and public agencies who are using Creative Commons. By opening up permission, just imagine how much we can achieve. Collaborating on what we hold in common, being open about big decisions and finding solutions in the spaces between us. Let's work together, confidently and legally. It's good to share with Creative Commons. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Respected Speaker, Professor Dr. Ida Madiha Abdul Ghani Azmi from Ahmad Ibrahim, Kuliah of Laws, IIUM. Respected Madam Yusrina Abu Bakar, Acting Chief Librarian from Dar Alikumah Library, IIUM. Academics and researchers, senior officials, library top management, senior management, Head of Units and Colleagues from Dar al Hikmah Library, IIUM. Ladies and gentlemen, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning. To gain more barakah from our session this morning, let us begin with the recitation of Umul Kitab Al Fatiha. Bismillah. Amin, amin, ya Rabbal Alamin. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are broadcasting from International Islamic University, Malaysia. And on behalf of Dar al Hikmah Library, we would like to extend our warm welcome to all the participants for joining us this morning in the sharing session with Professor Dr. Ida Madiha Abdul Ghani Azmi, entitled Creative Commons CC License. This sharing session is organized by Dar al Hikmah Library, IIUN, IIUM, and I am Siti Aziza Muhammad Noor, will be your moderator for today's session, inshallah. Ladies and gentlemen, as we all know, Professor Dr. Ida Madiha Abdul Ghani Azmi obtained her Bachelor of Laws, LLB, from IIUM, Master of Laws, LLM, from University of Cambridge and PhD from University of London in 1995. Prof. Ida has authored and presented extensively on various issues on intellectual property and cyber law. She is currently a professor at the Ahmad Ibrahim Kulia of Laws, IIUM, and the former Dean of Centre for Postgraduate Studies, IIUM. 
She was the lead consultant for the drafting of national guidelines on intellectual property and competition from 2017 until 2018. She served as the consultant to World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO, for the drafting of IP modules for MIPO Malaysia in 2017, the IP policy for Kathmandu University in 2016, and IP curriculum and syllabus in Bangladesh 2014. She has assisted WIPO on, to design database of copyright law and policy for Asian countries in 2022, model curriculum on copyright for arts and culture schools in developing countries, UG and PG, in 2022, and serve as a resource person for WIPO training programs. She currently serves as the consultant to the drafting of the Malaysian Cybersecurity Bill, which is awaiting to be tabled to the parliament. Prof. Ida served as a member of the Board of the Malaysian Intellectual Property Office, MIPO, from 2004 until 2008 and 2018 until 2020. She was the former Deputy Director of the Malaysian Copyright Tribunal from 2014 until 2017. She acts as a domain name panelist with the Kuala Lumpur Arbitration Centre and Asian International Arbitration Center. In the past, Prof. Ida served as a resource person for the Intellectual Property Training Center, ILCAP, and the World Trade Organization, WTO, Regional Trade Policy Program for Asia Pacific. She has served as the external reviewer for the multi Multimedia University Law Faculty from 2017 until 2018, and 2019 until 2021. And last but not least, she also uh, as a guest editor, Pertanika Journal of Social Science and Humanities. Ladies and gentlemen, this sharing session will be a platform for IIUM communities, especially researchers, to know about the Creative Commons CC licenses. CC license give everyone from individual creators to large institutions a standardized way to grant the public permission to use their creative work under copyright law. CC is a global non-profit organization that enables the sharing and reuse of creativity and knowledge through the provision of free legal tools. CC has affiliates and networks from around the world to help the license work internationally. Before we proceed, we hope that all participants can fill in the attendance. The link to the attendance is available in the chat box. And then, uh, inshallah, we will take a group photo at the end of this session. And we hope every participant uh, are highly recommended to use the program background provided in, also in the chat box. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is our great pleasure to welcome our speaker, Professor Dr. Ida Madiha Abdul Ghani Azmi to share her insight entitled Creative Commons CC License. During the presentation, if you have any inquiries, you are free to post question in the chat box and we will attend to your questions during the Q&A session. And now, presenting to you, ladies and gentlemen, Professor Dr. Ida Madiha Abdul Ghani Azmi. Over to you, Prof. Please welcome. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Siti Aziza, for a very lengthy introduction. Um, yes, actually, I, I don't deserve it. You know, after being in the academia for too long, of course, your CV gets to be very, very thick. But it's my pleasure to be with you today. And I thought <clears throat> the montage that was shown earlier gives a good background of what CC license is because we are now in the digital world and a lot of our work is shared online. Therefore, the CC license will be very useful for everybody. Now, if you uh, allow me to take a few minutes, you know, just to share my 
slides with you all. Right. <clears throat> Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam ala ashrafil anbiya wa musalid wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajwa'in. Again, I want to state my pleasure to be with you all today to study one of the most important innovation that has been created by a group of copyright professors led by Lawrence Lessig and his colleagues together with an NGO association that, which is known as Creative Commons. Now, Creative Commons is a very new organization. It starts in the year 2001, I believe. And within such a short time frame, you know, within 20 years, it has spread out throughout the world globally. And in terms of figures as well, there are many billions of works which have been shared online on Creative Commons license. That is because, you know, the network internet um, Networking and global networking nowadays is very massive and everybody is now online. Now, to understand Creative Commons, you must first understand copyright. <clears throat> A lot of people look at Creative Commons as an antithesis of copyright. That is not true. Creative Commons is actually building on copyright, building on copyright. The exclusive rights which were given by copyright to us are now being made easier in terms of its distribution, sharing and collaboration using Creative Commons online. Now, <clears throat> just to refresh ourselves what copyright is all about. Copyright is essentially the exclusive right given to the owner uh, of copyright uh, for a specific period. It is governed in Malaysia by the Copyright Act 1987. And in Malaysia, although there is no system of registration for copyright in Malaysia, but it's very typical, you know, for organization and individuals to file for voluntary notification for various purposes, you know, for KPI, for, um, for authentication purposes, for documentation purposes and whatnot. But theoretically, it exists without any kind of formality. Now, for copyright to exist, all you need to show is that the work is original in nature. And when we talk about original in nature, we are talking about the kind of effort that goes into the creation of the work. The creation, the effort must be sufficient enough to make the work original in character. And secondly, the work must be written down, recorded or reduced to a material form. And the author is a qualified person or the work is made in Malaysia, or the work is first published in Malaysia. Now, these are the three important criteria to determine whether a work is protected in Malaysia or not. The most contentious one, of course, in, is in relation to sufficient effort, particularly nowadays that you know, some work are created with the assistance of artificial intelligence, right? Either in the form of content, text, music, or audio files, and even artwork. There are many uh, artificial intelligence uh, platform out there that helps you to create those works. But that is a contention that is um, have being debated around the world, and there's no uh, easy solution to that. But what we are trying to focus today is essentially looking at the type of copyright work that we have, and in what ways can we benefit from it, right? Most people, when they create works, they want to share with others. They want the work to be distributed as widely as possible to others. And in terms of the copyright works which are eligible for copyright protection, you'll find that copyright, in comparison to other intellectual property rights, such as trademark and patent, the subject matter is more, um, you know, broad. It covers literary, musical, artistic, artistic work, film, sound recording, and broadcast, and even derivative work. So it ranges from the memo that you write in, uh, in your office to the artwork that you create for your brochures and the audio files that you create maybe for your videos, and as well as you know, whatever apps that you create um, to us to assist the uh, the new doing of business in the world nowadays. So because it's very embracing, uh, there are many ways to monetize those work. And 
typically in this digital world, you would want to monetize it online and you would want to share it online. And of course, you know, um, a work is uh, can be um, improved in many ways because your work is not 100% perfect. You know, others may use your work for purpose of remix, uh, parody, uh, meme, and so on. And it's much, much easier if the work uh, license to use the work is done through CC license. Now, a typical way of um, <clears throat> allowing your work to be used by others is either by way of assignment, which is a complete transfer of right, or by giving permission for another person to undertake something, all right? To do something which would not be otherwise possible without your permission. We call that license. So license is essentially a permission for someone else to do something in relation to your copyright work. Now, both assignment of rights and license can be limited, right? It can be limited by time, it can be limited by territory, and it's the same thing with license. It can be exclusive license, it can be non-exclusive license. If you have a manuscript, for example, there are multiple ways in which you can monetize or share your work with the public. So you can enter into a publishing agreement. Who knows? <clears throat> your story is so unique that uh, movie producers show interest to adapt it into a film. So you have to enter into a book adaptation agreement. And if the book is published, then you have to you have to agree to the distribution of the work. Uh, in a form of distribution agreement. There may be other parts of the world who is interested in your book and wanting to translate it into their language, then there'll be translation agreement. There may be interest to turn it into um, audio books. So you have to enter into another agreement. And there may be others who are interested to put excerpts and quotation of your book into um, another work or a derivative. That is another agreement that you have to enter into. But, you know, you have to remember that all this adaptation would have to obtain clear permission from you as the author. Now, of course, if I am a very successful author like J.K. Rowling, I would want to control all the adaptation right, publishing rights um, through me and through my lawyers because I know there's a huge demand for my work. But if I am just an ordinary person, and nobody knows about me, and it's difficult for people to reach me, right? Uh, so it's much easier for me to actually share uh, the work through CC license so that the work will be um, shared on a worldwide basis. The only, the only caution is that once you share it on CC license, you are not getting any royalty out of it, right? But if you were to control the distribution, the sharing, the collaboration through the traditional ways, of course, you can control the monetizing of your work and you can control and ensure that the money will come to yourself. So this is a typical publishing agreement. 20 years ago, if you enter into a publishing agreement, it may also be still this, the situation nowadays with certain publishers. When you sign a publishing agreement, you give away all your rights to the publisher. You even The rights is even un, for unlimited use. And on top of that, some of it is actually worldwide and in all media known and hereafter developed. What you have done is practically rel relinquish all your rights. And the effect of this is actually a complete sale of right to the publisher. Now, this, this complete transfer of ownership somehow can lead to unfair situation. If, for example, later there is a demand for your work to be adapted into a firm and that firm becomes successful. And at the end, you won't be able to claim any money from the eventual um, showing of the firm because you have given out your right in the beginning at the time of the publishing of the agreement. Now, this is a risk which most authors would have to um, take care of at the beginning um, upon publishing agreement. While in relation to a license, right, 
it as usual, uh, I'd like assignment of rights as well, the permission to use is upon payment, um, a payment of royalty, right? And this license, like I mentioned, it can be limited or not limited to territory and time. It can also be exclusive and non-exclusive. It can cover one or more exclusive license. You may, may or not allow sub-licensing and it may be a limited use of license. But the effect is, if you just give out license, you retain ownership. You only control how third party uses the work. And at the bottom, you can see a typical license clause, right? A typical license clause in any um, uh, intellectual property agreement or copyright uh, agreement, right? That clause can differ depending on the type of license that you grant to the other party. But that is essentially a typical license agreement. Now, the problem with assignment and license in the real world is that permission would have to be obtained from you, right? Personally from you or your um, agent. If you're a successful author, you have a manager, an agent that go and seek out uh, commercial deals on your behalf and will be negotiating for the contract on your behalf, right? Uh, <clears throat> and this is possible if there is a one-to-one -one connection between you and the user of uh, the work. But imagine yourself in a digital world. There are multiple users out there in the global world who are interested to use your work. And it would be very difficult for them to connect to you individually and asking from the license from you individually. So the problem with um, the way assignment and license are um, done in the real world is that it will take time, distance, and money for you to secure license from a particular author. There's a risk that you might not be getting the permission at all. You need to go down and negotiate personally, one-to-one, -one, and seek permission from the other party. And of course, in relation to certain works such as musical and literary work, there are those collecting societies that act on behalf of the authors, but it doesn't cover all types of work. And most importantly, all agreement involving copyright must be in writing. And if you are, if you are just an ordinary user, right, and you, you look at all those clauses, like legal clauses, you, sometimes you don't understand what it actually means. There is a problem that you give up more than what you actually um, plan or you pay more than what you actually uh, anticipate in the first place. So in, in the real world with the ordinary, with the traditional assignment of license, it's very important for you to have a legal intermediary. And this legal intermediary must have legal knowledge to ensure that you get a good deal from your assignment and license. Now, that definitely does not gel with the digital world because you know there are thousands of billions of work which are created on a second basis. And you know the idea is actually to be shared to the whole world. And there are many people, creators and authors who actually don't mind. Um, I mean, money is not, something that comes up first thing in on their mind, they would rather their work to be shared and contributed to the whole world on a sharing basis rather than, you know, collecting money on an individual basis. Now, if you are a successful author, you can actually strategize. Some works you can share it on a CC uh, basis. For example, if you are new in your career, you would want to provide samples to the whole world, you know, how good your work is, then you can put it on a CC license. And later, you know, if you have a um, blockbuster uh, work, then you can negotiate a, a proper publisher uh, in on, on a, a, a traditional uh, copyright uh, agreement and gain money out of it. Now, <clears throat> just as a way of background, Creative Commons started in 2001 through a discussion and a discourse uh, among uh, copyright professors, particularly looking at how difficult it is to get copyright clearance 
to um, come up with a particular work. You know, most of us, when we are working on something, right, we have to rely on existing materials, right? No work is 100% original. So typical for you to rely on existing works to come up with your work. But at that, at some time, um, you know, your work may amount to an adaptation of an existing work. And for your work to be clear for publication, you need to get permission from the next door. Of course, it's as easy as knocking the door and asking for permission, right? But if the author is at the end of the world and you don't know him, and uh, therefore the process of getting permission and license will take some time. So this whole idea of, you know, making platforms, allowing works to be <clears throat> put up and shared on a Creative Commons license is a very original idea. And the idea was to match the user and uh, the author in a digital platform. Now, unlike what some people think, copyright uh, Creative Commons is a system which is based on copyright, okay? Based on copyright, uh, but <clears throat> the idea is not all rights are reserved. Only certain rights are reserved. So the uniqueness of Creative Commons is that it's based on sharing and collaboration. The idea is to uh, come up with a system where you can give a proper balance between protection given to the copyright authors and the user's interest to have access to information. Um, the fact that it is difficult to get copyright clearance and um, this whole thing is to enable people to share their work and ideas with others, you know, for free. Um, and you'll be able to do that using a digital platform. So it's very fast. It's a very digital economy um, thingy. So as you can see, if you choose the traditional copyright system, all rights will be reserved. Essentially, what you're saying is that this work is mine, 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 mine. I don't allow you to do anything about it. You have to seek permission from me, me and me only, right? So, of course, in this digital world, it doesn't work out that way. If you are so um, exclusive in your, um, in your control of your work, then perhaps your work will not be um, useful to others. In contrast, there's this open license what Kriti Cromans basically confers. And it's essentially saying that this work is mine. I'm, sh I'm sharing it with you because I allow you to take my material as long as you make a proper attribution to me, right? As long as you acknowledge I am the author of the work and you can do it for free. You don't even need to ask my permission to use it. You don't have to send me an email. You don't have to knock my door. Just use it. But make sure you acknowledge my rights over it. Now, a lot of content creators will prefer the open license system because it's easy for them to make their work available for others in comparison to the control system, which is the copyright system. Right. So Creative Commons give a lot of uh, benefits to authors and creators. The most important thing is the openness, right? And a, a, a lot of this digital platform is essentially open and young ones especially and even a new generation which have grown up with internet. For them, this openness thingy is a very, very attractive concept. And it allows others to access and use the work. It allows collaboration and sharing. It allows remix and the creation of all kinds of derivatives over your either it's meme or parody and whatnot. And you don't need to go and seek specific permission from the author because the license is already given. As far as the user is concerned, people like me and you, right? Because people like me and you can be both creators as well as users. At one point of time, you may be the user. And at one point of time, you may be the creator, right? Because the boundary between user and creator is actually very thin. Once you start creating your own work, you become creator. Um, but you're using other people's work. 
So the benefit from Creative Commons is that is it allows you to copy the work, allows you to modify for any purpose in any format, including commercial, if that is allowed by the license. You can uh, translate, you can reprint, you can modify as long as you attribute the original author of the work. Now, this definitely is a very wonderful scheme because it allows users and creators to work on existing work and advance their work um, on that basis. So as you can see in the uh, documentary just now, what they have crafted is four main licenses, all right? This, from these four main licenses, you can develop it into six type of licenses, but it all originates from this core key license. The most importantly is attribution, right? Attribution. Attribution is a form of recognition of the moral right of the author, right? Since you are modifying and using the word, of course, it is fair that you acknowledge that that person is the author of the work, right? That is what attribution is all about. So if you choose the broadest, like the broadest license, which is CCBY, you allow your work to be used in any format for any purpose, even for non-commercial reason, as long as that person attribute the work to you as the original author of the work. So if you look at what is written on your slides, for example, if you choose just SSB, uh, CCBY, then it basically allows others to copy, distribute, display, perform, and remix your work if they credit your name as requested by you. In fact, attribution to uh, of the original author of the work is very Islamic, right? Because he is the original author of the work. So, you know, it makes sense. And it's also very Islamic for you to attribute him as the original author of the work. Secondly, you can say that I'm happy for others to use my work, but I don't want people to develop, the others to develop or modify uh, my work and turn it into a derivative. Because, you know, once you allow um, modification of your work, for all you know, it can be modified into something which goes outside your the context of your original message, right? It may um, insult you, it may impede on your, on your sensitivities. Right. So some authors, for example, they're very concerned about um, their work. Um, they wouldn't want their work to be simply modified by others because it might be like, like I said, it may be used out of the context. So in the context of no derivative works, you say, OK, you can copy, you can distribute, you can display or perform verbatim copies of your work, but you must not modify it. Right. So your artwork can appear as, as a background screen for certain videos, for other artwork, but uh, it cannot be, um, you know, modified. And of course, the term modification here can be pretty contentious as well. Um, what if you uh, reduce the size? Would that amount to modification? And from uh, you know cases that was brought to court, if it's just reduced in size, that will not amount to modification. Like I mean, it's common that you crop the size of the photos, for example. Does that amount to modification? And the court held that it does not. Right. So modification would have to entail some form of modification of the original work then um, that will amount to a modification of the work. Now, the third key license is essentially share alike. So you allow others to distribute your work only under a license identical to the one you have chosen for your work. In GNU terms or copyleft terms, this is considered as a viral term, right? If I were to put my work on CCBY uh, and D, no, no derivative. The second user and the third user, or, or, or share alike, okay, share alike, the second user or the third user will not be able to use it outside the scope of the original license. So the original license will then be transferred from your work into successive works, you know, through this license because 
the way license work in, in contract is that license work upon notice. So when you put the license on the work that you have um, shared with others on a CC license basis, and of course that amount to notice to a third party and a third party will not be able to use it outside the scope of uh, the original license. The fourth key license is non-commercial where you allow others to copy, distribute, display, perform, or remix your work, but for non-commercial purposes only, right? Non-commercial purposes only. Um, like, like I mentioned as well, that means you don't uh, mind people modify your work, create parody, create remix as you like, but only for non-commercial purposes. So this would allow students, for example, to adapt a work, you know, for their presentation in classroom, say for example, right? Then because it's not for non, uh, it's not for commercial basis, then that you be covered under this license. So from the four key license terms, okay, these are just the common Creative Commons platforms uh, that has been developed around the world using CC license, all right? So from the four uh, common key terminology it resulted into six type of licenses. Now, if you look at the montage that was shown earlier, it brings you to the Creative Commons website that has a lot of information on which license to choose, which license will be useful to you. Now, choosing the right license is very, very important. Because you may think that <clears throat> um, at the point of you sharing the work, you don't mind your work to be used by others in whatever purpose, in whatever, what, in whatever format. Think first, right? Because there have been many cases where um, you know, the uh, purpose has been used outside the context um, because the original author did not presuppose that the work is valuable enough to be taken by others and commercialized by others. And from the point of the user as well, you also have to look at the CC license to ensure that whatever use um, you whatever use you do in relation to the work is covered under the license. Because if you look at the cases that we have nowadays as well, uh, some of it because the users uh, were not familiar with the CC license and thought that their use is covered under the CC license. So even though uh, with CC license, it has made things easier for both user and creator. Right? And, and, and if you read the license terms, which are created by CC as well, it's very simple, yeah, easy to understand. It's very um, layman's terminology, you know, not unlike a lot of these part of agreements that we come across nowadays, they are written in, you know, old Akai, English language, very difficult to understand, right? So even though it is easy, in easy language and easy to understand, people still have a lot of uh, wrong um, conclusion and impression on the context and the scope of those licenses. So be careful with the license that you choose. So if you are um, clear Clearly wanting to share your work with anybody you like, and you don't care where it is, how it is used afterwards, then choose CCBY. CCBY is the broadest, broadest license. The only thing is that the second user or third user, the fourth user, we need to attribute you, right, as the original author of the work. So it's essentially allowed that person to use the even for money, all right, even for money, modify and put into a billboard, put into a, um, advertisement, into TikTok, make money out of it because it is CCBY. Right? If you are okay with that, okay, choose CCBY. The second one is CCBY SA attribution share alike. Um why you put CCBY as A? Because you want the derivatives will also be developed using the same uh, original license terms um, as uh, like, like the original work that you release out to the public, all right? So can someone use 
uh, my money to make work, to make money? Yes. Can someone change my work? Yes. All right. And then in between, there are ranges of, uh, you know, CC license, like attribution, non-commercial. Okay. You don't mind people to develop derivatives, but please don't make out of money out of it because I give my license for free and you are taking millions out of my work. Surely that is pretty unfair, right? You are riding unfairly on my labor. Okay. So you put attribution non-commercial. And if you don't want them to develop any derivatives at all, you want the work to be shared like the original work as I post it. So you choose attribution non-derivatives. So there's no way in which the work will be modified at all. So you can crop the work, no problem, but you cannot alter the work. Attribution non-commercial, no derivatives. This is pretty restrict as well, restrictive as well because that person cannot develop any derivative from the work and cannot use it for uh, commercial uh, purposes, right? And attribution non-commercial share alike. And this is the most restrictive in a sense that any derivatives which are developed from your work would have to carry the same terms, all right? It has to be uh, non-commercial um, and um, although that person uh, can change my work, but it has to be for non-commercial basis. Okay, so one good one good thing about Creative Commons license is that <clears throat> it is in a, a legal format. It is a legal agreement, right? It's drafted by, like I mentioned, a group of copyright professors and NGOs, and these are all all lawyers, reducing all the ter uh, terminologies in layman's terms. And it is enforceable because after 20 years, there have been many court cases that have um, decided on Creative Commons license and treat it to be enforceable as contractual agreement. Secondly, it's human readable. I mean, you can read those terminologies, those terms, license terms on you know, the website and you can get a good idea of what it's all about. And on top of that, it's machine readable. And it is read even by search engines and whatnot. And like you see in Montage just now, you can even search Creative Commons content, which are available on the internet. Therefore, you can use it as illustrations for your work and, and whatnot. So it's, it's very, very friendly in this digital economy for both creators and the authors. These are the uh, Creative Commons license. Right, which is available on the on their website. Um, it is now the 4.0 version. You know, over the years they have improved on, on, on the license um, based on the cases that went to the court, and they have improved it um, every now and then. And this is the fourth version, and you can see this on their website. Okay, and this is essentially a repetition of what is compressed in the info chat just now. Okay, now, <clears throat> because Creative Commons have become a very easy platform to mediate between the users and the authors, there have been a lot of uptake by publishers. Publishers like Open Access Journal, for example, would you know uh, publish the article using a CC license, and public um, blogs um, or online content such as Wikipedia and and whatnot. And I I've also met, given out a, a list of platforms where you know works are being shared on Creative Commons basis. Will have that CC license at the bottom, right? So all you need to do is to look at the uh, uh, see the Creative Commons uh, license at the bottom to see um, what are the terms of the license so that it's easy for you to make decision uh, later, whether you want to develop a derivative out of it and you want to share it with others or you want to modify the work. In the context of this article, for example, this is released in the broadest CC license, you know, because it's an academy article, right? Um, you would want it to be uh, shared to the global community on an open basis, 
And when you do this, you are actually targeting citation figures so that your work is uh, more accessible to other researchers and therefore your work will be more cited by others. And believe me, you know, after 30 years in the academy line, a lot of my articles in uh, paid journals, right, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, very high tiered uh, journals are not well cited by users because it's not accessible to them. Um, because a lot of these articles can only be accessed through paid databases, while open access journals, because it's free, it is freely distributed around the world and you can get more citation through open access journals. This is an, an example of artwork with CC license, you know, from a Malaysian artist or Latif, right? And he has put uh, quite a, a number of his artwork on CC uh, Attribution Non-Commercial 4.0. Um, that means he, he has no problem with you um, to share and even adapt, you know, remix, transform, and build upon his work. Um, but on non-commercial basis, because he's giving it to you for free, definitely he would mind if you were to generate money out of it. There are some universities who have actually adopted it as an institutional policy. So in, in UIA, for example, we have this online repository for a student's thesis, right? SREP. And we um, allow the students to post their thesis to be available uh, to everybody on open access basis, right? But we can also adopt Creative Commons license where you know, the students can choose on, uh, on what basis their work is openly shared to others, right? They, the students can actually opt for no derivatives, no commercial. And if you are okay with it being just shared as freely as possible, then you choose CCBY. If we were to do this, then we have to really educate our students on the various types of the creative license. And it, it is also a powerful empowerment for the students because they may have been used to this with a lot of these online platforms when they share their work on other online platforms. They're already using the kind of license, um, you know, uh, when on, on what basis their works are shared to others. So it's also good if we were to adopt it as an institutional policy um, and allow the students to choose uh, some form of creative license uh, to share their thesis to the global community. This is an example of thesis with CC license and this is with, with the University of Toronto. <clears throat> so to recoup, right? To recap, sorry, to recap, what are the benefits that you get uh, from um, sharing your thesis on a CC license basis? It allows better sharing of your work. This is the most important thing for an author and a creator and for an academic like me. You know, after 30 years in the academia, I feel that my work are not um, widely distributed to others. People are not familiar with my work. If I were to uh, put it out on a CC license on a sharing basis, then of course, it will increase readership. It will advance scholarly discourse. It will definitely contribute to public good. And the fact that it is machine readable, that means it is searchable using a lot of these uh, search engines. And that would add citation to my work. And you know, for uh, academics particularly, when you spend so much time creating a work, what you want is essentially your work to be, um, you know, shared widely uh, to almost everybody. Previously, you know, a normal publishing agreement serves that purpose. You know, the publisher stands between you and the reader. The publisher ensures your work is distributed to others, right? That is a typical publishing agreement. But in the digital world, you know, CC license is one useful platform to ensure your work is um, distributed around the world. You must remember certain things though. This CC license cannot be revoked. 
Secondly, the work that you are sharing with others must be your own. There must not be an issue of plagiarism. There must not be an issue of um, falsehood, right? Um, and for students particularly, some parts of their thesis may have been published, right? So you must make sure that there is no uh, contradictory um, claims between the publisher and you know, uh, the, the fact that you share it on a CC license. So you have to be careful with things that you're not sure whether you completely own it or not. If you completely own it and there was no issue of uh, plagiarism or others' interest on it, then of course, be it, right? Share it on a CC license basis. CC license can also be useful for research data, right? Research data nowadays is privy to the researcher and is not known to others. Take for example, my recent research was on the future of law schools in Malaysia. So we interviewed lawyers and companies as to how they feel about our legal students, right? In terms of their skills and knowledge, where they are lacking, where and, and where are they, you know, advancing? And in what form can we improve, whether it is the teaching, the curriculum or the pedagogy? The collection of data itself is painstaking. We aim uh, to have uh, 2,000 respondents, but we end up getting maybe about 200 or 300 respondents because of COVID-19, right? But the information in the survey form is very useful to others, other researchers who may want to come, to come up with another research and add on to our research, right? I mean, they don't have to ask the same questions that we ask. They don't have to uh, ask the same respondents that we have. Yet they don't have well, access to our, uh, our right? But they don't have our uh, data, personal data. So it is also possible for you to share your data on Creative Commons license so that others can build on your research and improve on it and and enrich it. Okay. And and um and I remember at one point of time, uh, I we had or oh, I organized a talk on open data, um, where you can make your data um, um accessible widely to other researchers so that other researchers can make full use of it. This is already ongoing for certain disciplines, but it may not be as mainstream as it is for all disciplines, right? Now, it is also possible for you to do that through this Creative Commons license. All right. Now, since I have gone through the basic principles and elements of uh, Creative Commons, what I, I'm going to do in the next 10 minutes is actually to highlight to you some of the cases involving Creative Commons. I wouldn't go through it in detail. Suffice to tell you that there are already many cases involving Creative Commons, and the most beautiful thing that came out from it is that, you know, it shows uh, courts actually recognize Creative Commons license. But the enforceability of Creative Commons license is on the basis of it being a contractual agreement between the author and the public, right? Um, just like publishing agreement or any other typical licensing agreement like distribution agreement, uh, the enforceability of it depends on it being a valid and legitimate contractual agreement between uh, authors and the publisher or the user. Now, in this case, for example, Curry and Odex. <clears throat> Curry posted photos in Flickr, and Flickr is a common platform which, which release photos on a CC license basis, right? So there was a publisher um, by the name of Weekend who republished four of the photos without Curry's approval. Of course, the photo is released with a CC license, a standard CC license. However, um, because we can 
is um, a publisher that makes money out of it. So by him publishing it uh, for commercial purposes, that has gone beyond the CC license, which were origin, which were put originally together with the photos. All right. Same thing in Sage and Fernandez. Um, this suit involves a broadcasting organization. That broadcasting organization claims that all its uh, service and operation is for non-commercial basis. That means, you know, it's for free. They're not taking money out of it. But the Spanish court um, construed any kind of public broadcasting as a commercial uh, arrangement because, you know, the broadcasting organization definitely will make money out of advertisement, for example, right? So that means you're using the um, music here, music outside the context of uh, the creative, the original Creative Commons license. And this is a beautiful uh, quotation from the court, right? Where um, the judge, the judge observed that, you know, the author possessed some moral and economic rights on his creation. And just because you put it out on a Creative Commons license, it doesn't mean that he totally forgo his moral and economic rights. That's not true. You know, so what CC Common essentially does is to enable you to exercise your copyright exclusive rights in a manner which is easy and in line with all uh, this digital network. All right. These are, again, some other examples of um, usage of Creative Commons, as well as you know, cases involving Creative Commons. At the right, for example, there was a case involving um, a dispute over Creative Commons, and the court says that when you choose a license that says non-commercial, then the um, use must be purely for personal use. Personal use, meaning it covers the, uh, you know, private use by individuals, not in any commercial uh, service. Right. These are some other cases involving Creative Commons, Gatehouse Media, and that's great news, which was settled in August 17, 2010. Deutschland Radio and Photographer. Uh, this is in relation to non-commercial Creative Commons license. And there was a photo from Flickr, which was used by Deutschland Radio. Uh, which is a public broadcaster, and the court held that since uh, this is done through broadcasting service, therefore it is for commercial basis, and that takes it, takes it out from the non-commercial Creative Commons license. But the most interesting case is, of course, Chang and Virgin Mobile. That case involved both breach of privacy as well as breach of Creative Commons license. This case involved a photo which was released in Flickr. The photo is uh, the photo involves a teenager, right? A teenager in 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 the US, and it was um, the photo was taken freely when she participated in her um, local community um, activities or events. Actually, it's a, it's a local church uh, event. So there was a photo taken by her by uh, by um, the officers. Uh, in, in the church, and it was put up on Flickr. Suddenly, the photo was taken by a big telecommunication company, Virgin Mobile, and it was put on billboard in Australia. So she then sued for breach of CC license, uh, copyright, as well as breach of privacy. So in the, in the context of breach of pri privacy, because the photo was taken freely, with her consent in a public event, so there was no breach of privacy. In the context of copyright infringement, uh, because she was not the photographer, so she doesn't own copyright over the photo, and it was the basically the pastor who took the photo, um, therefore the pastor is the copyright owner. So there was no issue of copyright infringement at all, because she's not the owner of the copyright. But in the context of a uh, breach of uh, CC license, it turns out that the photo was released in the broadest 
Creative Commons license, which is CCBY. So when you release it on CCBY, that means you allow it to be used, shared, remixed, even for non-commercial basis, right? <clears throat> so it's very important for you to choose the right kind of Creative Commons license to ensure that you get your rights to be protected. You may think that, uh, you know, you don't, you, you, at the time of releasing the photo, the idea was actually you want to share it with everybody for free. But, you know, if it is used by others on a commercial context or commercial basis, definitely it will impinge on your interest as well. So there were a number of other cases like this one, uh, Drug List and Kappa Map. Uh, group Lim LLC, um, where there's a photo taken by plaintiff as the cover up for a commercially released Montgomery County, Maryland street necklace. But a photo is released on Flickr again on CCBY SA 2.0 license. The only issue in this case is in relation to whether the attribution is sufficient, you know. Because um, it is important for you to attribute the original author of the work. Now, the attribution can come in many forms. It's important also for the attribution to be sufficient. In this case, the attribution appear at the back cover, at the back cover of the work. And, you know, the original author said it is not sufficient, but the court held that it is sufficient. The photo also has uh, been cropped. Uh, so the plaintiff claimed that, you know, this have taken it um, out of the CC Commons license by, by becoming a derivative, but God help that simply cropping the photo does not amount to a derivative, right? There was no major deletions, there was no mal, uh, major alterations, therefore the use is not against CC license. These are some of the other cases involving um, CC Commons. Uh, in Philpot and WOS, the court held that hy hyperlinking is enough attribution as CC license in any reasonable manner. In Great Minds and FedEx Office and Print Services, uh, in this case, the court had uh, to determine whether uh, the license would be applicable to a third party and the court held that it is not. And in Philpot and LM Communications, the issue as to the unauthorized use of the CC license. And remember, CC license is given out for free. Now, when the word is given, given out for free and there is an infringement of the copyright of the work, uh, this happened when? When the work is used outside of the CC license, it becomes a copyright uh, contract, uh, a contract breach as well as a copyright breach, right? So the court had to determine the amount of damages or compensation given to the owner. Now, typically when you assess a damages, you look at the um, royalty license as a criteria to determine how much you have to compensate the author, right? But remember, CC license is for free. So at times, the court would have difficulty in determine, determining the amount of compensation to be given to the author. So in this case, the court gave a um, very minimal amount of what, which is uh, 3,500 US dollars. All right. And in another case, we report as well, uh, where the court noted that since CC license is free, um, the court can also grant damages on the basis of statutory damages, right, rather than compensatory damages, particularly if the, um, the conduct is willful or the infringement is willful. Right. So coming back to you and me, <clears throat> if you contrast copy, copyright or creative commons, which one would be more useful to me? If you have a masterpiece and you want to control everything over the masterpiece, do it by way of traditional arrangements, copyright it, all rights reserved right? All right, reserved. But if you are um, a, a young artist and you are at the beginning of your career and you'll be creating lots and lots of creative work and you want to share some works as samples to the community so that people pay attention to your work, 
then use Creative Commons. Use Creative Commons, distribute your work on a global basis. But if you don't want people to ride on your labor, then you make sure that you choose no derivatives and no commercial, right? Um, the feature is also, the feature is very, very um, friendly, very user-centric. Um, you uh, allow others to create a remix, a meme and parody out of your work. No need to get clearance from you because the license is already given out. All right? The other way is you can also dedicate your work freely um, to the others. Sorry. Um, by um, putting it into the public domain. Um, CC has extended its license to include this new service for public domain work. Okay, now the traditional concept of public domain is that there is no copyright over the work at all. And this would cover certain types of work such as okay right the copyright has expired like we all know that uh copyright over p ramley's uh, musical composition has expired so the work has expired and it's already in the public domain so you can put it out on uh, public domain uh, platforms. In the US, they have certain rules in relation to renewal of copyright registration that is very uh, local and very domestic and very US thing. So if the copyright owner fail to comply with the renewal rules, then the work is already in the public domain. But it also allows you as a copyright owner or copyright author to dedicate your work to the public. So you want to put it in the public. You don't care how the work is being used by others, right? There are certain subject matters as well where copyright does not protect. For example, data. I mentioned just now research data, right? Data is not protectable. Compilation of data is protected under copyright. So those kind of things, you can put it into the public domain if you feel that your data will be useful for other researchers and can be used by other researchers, then you can put it up in the public domain. How do uh, <clears throat> CC license do it? They have this CCO, waiver of rights, okay? CCO license. It, essence, it essentially says that there are no rights reserved at all. For CC license, certain rights reserved, right? But for CCO, no rights reserved at all. Now, CCO enables scientists, educators, artists, and other creators and owners of uh, copyright or database protected content to waive whatever rights that you have in your work and allow them to be available to the global community on a free basis so that others can build on it, enhance and reuse any of the work without restriction at all. Um, so this, this CCO license is now available and there are many, many examples of the usage of the CCO license. Sorry, I'm hearing some, uh, some, somebody talking. Okay, so there are many examples of CCO license which are already being used now. For example, Europe uh, Digital right Library releases its metadata into the public domain using CCO, right? Figshare also allows researchers to publish all their research outputs in an easily citable, searchable, shareable manner. Uh, therefore, people um, can use your research data uh, for their research purposes and build on it, enhance and, and reuse it for whatever purpose, all right? There is the CCO 1.0 Universal Public Domain Dedication. Uh, this is for copyright 
material which is already which is still in copyright protection, you can dedicate it to the public domain. And essentially, you're not claiming any copyright over it at all, right? No copyright over it at all. This is free cultural works. This is like, uh, you know, wakaf. You wakaf your ilmu, right? So you wakaf your knowledge and dedicate it to the public. So the person who associated a work with this deed has dedicated the work to the public community by waiving all of his or her rights to the work worldwide under copyright law, including all related and neighboring rights to the extent allowed by the law. You can copy, modify, distribute, and perform the work. The only thing is that, you know, um, you have to be careful with uh, certain rights. You don't give up other intellectual property rights, right? Trademark or privacy rights, you know, or parents. You only give up your copyright rights. And what I have on the slides are platform that support public domain, right? Um, if you need certain pictures, illustrations, artwork, to illustrate your book or your work, you can search this public domain site and you can get you know, free music, um, sheet music, sound recordings, literary work that, is, that has been dedicated to the public uh, through the public domain license. Um, with that, I think that's basically the end of my CC license uh, presentation because this talk is essentially on CC license. Although I have prepared some slides on Marrakesh Treaty, but I think it is not relevant for us today. All right, we will focus it on CC license. There are certain issues and challenges though for creative license. The most important thing is you need to choose the right license, right? Uh, it is clear now the court recognize the license as contractual arrangements. But whenever the use is goes, goes outside the CC license, it automatically becomes a copyright breach. Therefore, most of the cases that go to the court for breach of CC license have an alternative claim, alternative copyright claim. So you have to be prepared for both, right? Most importantly, some authors, particularly they, they regretted that they put up their work so early in its commercial uh, life. Um, at the time they share it with others, you know, um, there is no uh, demand for the work yet. So they give it up for free. So some authors want to withdraw the work from Creative Commons license, and it's actually not possible, right? You have to be clear with what you want to share with the others. Maybe you can um, come up with a derivative of your work and um, that derivative can be distributed on a commercial basis. Most importantly, there must be proper attribution of the original work, which contains the author's name, the title of the license image, and the web address of the original site. And if um, you have um, crop the work in any form or any manner, there must be a statement identifying, right? That, and there must be a copy or, or, or hyperlink to the original site and the CC license must be displayed very clearly. With regards to um, using works in the public domain, um, one problem that we have in the physical world is that it's difficult to determine whether a work has fallen in the public domain because different countries have different copyright duration. Malaysia, uh, we protect copyright for lifetime plus 50. But in our neighboring countries, Singapore, they protect lifetime plus 70. And Indonesia as well, lifetime plus 70. So what may be in the public domain in Malaysia, but not in Indonesia and not in Singapore. And if you were to put it out on, uh, you know, on, on the internet, of course, um, it cross borders, then th that will be a difficulty. So the best is to search for materials from uh, the public domain website because it's very clear cut that the work is already um, freely available on public domain basis. And if you are the author and you dedicate your work to the public on CCO, um, 
you have to remember that you already surrender your copyright over the work. But again, the surrender is only in relation to copyright. And if the image is were to be modified and it impedes on your uh, privacy interest, then you can still sue for publicity. And if that work, uh, that image you have protected uh, by using trademark, for example, you can still uh, retain your trademark rights over your artwork. Um, CCO, uh, for CCO, you may uh, be concerned about your name being um, attributed, uh, being your work being attributed to you, so you can request attribution, although it's not compulsory. All right, with that, I end my presentation with Wabilahi Taufiq Walidah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm more than happy to respond to your queries. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor Dr. Ida Madiha, for your uh, presentation just now. It is a very, very informative and interesting uh, sharing for all of us today. Eh? Uh, I have a long list of notes, Prof. Huh? Among others, uh, this is my first time knowing that uh, the CC license, we do have six license uh, types. Huh? And we are. Uh, it is very important for everyone to choose uh, which one uh, that suit or most benefit to uh, you know our work? Okay, uh, thank you again, uh, Prof. And Alhamdulillah, we gain uh, so many tips. And today uh, we know that CC license is very suitable for the research data management. Uh, that is uh, among the initiative of the university. Inshallah, we will have uh, this project. Huh? And for the researchers who are interested to join the project, please, uh, we, we are more than happy. Uh, please do welcome to the project. Huh? Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, now we have uh, come to the questions and answer session. If you have uh, your question, you may write in the chat box or you may also uh, unmute your mic to uh, ask question verbally. Okay, uh, while waiting for the question, I have one here. We have one. <clears throat> uh, a question from um, Madam Mazna Zakaria. Uh, Salam Prof. Ida. Uh, who monitors the usage of CC license? Is there any implications in the case of no attribution is given to the original author? Yes, please welcome. Just like any copyright issues, it is a private action. It's your work and you would have to monitor it. But it's easy because of the machine readable a code that comes together with your work, right? So you can actually track the usage of your work. But like any other personal rights, it's on the author to um, trace and to monitor the usage of his or her work. Okay. Thank you, Prof, for the uh, answer. Uh, is there any question? Other question, please, from the audience? Uh, Okay, Prof, uh, I think I, I also have a question. Um, if we already applied for CC license, but we, uh, you know, uh, mistakenly choose uh, from the six types of license, uh, from your sharing just now, we, uh, the license cannot uh, revoke, right? So is there any way to change the license? For example, after quite some time, people make money from our work. So we want to change it. Is it is it possible, Prof? The way it is done now, it's not possible because the license is um, not restricted in terms of duration. Mm -hmm. 
There's no reversionary of rights to the original author. Okay, okay. So we have to be very careful before we choose among the six of uh, CC yeah. license types. Okay. Yeah. All right. Choose uh, the least restrictive. That's the best. Not uh, the broadest. Okay, okay. All right. Okay. Um, I think uh, no more questions eh, from the audience. Uh, oh, it's the, other way, it's the other way around. The most restrictive, <laughs> not the least restrictive. Ah, not okay. The broadest. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, <coughs> Assalamualaikum, Prof. I have a question. Salam. Yeah. Okay, my name is Is Atira. I'm from Susmet mm -hmm. Hospital. Okay, mm -hmm. um, just a very quick one. If let's say we have our own micro credential uh, information like module, the guideline and everything, it should be kept mm -hmm. under what we call our own institutions, right? But if we oh. if we were to uh, request for this copyright or a common uh, what we call creative common license, in which category it will be fit? Or suitable for the micro credential. You said just now it's uh, choose the most restrictive one, right? Okay, yeah. because I'm not familiar. No derivatives, with, uh, no commercial. No yeah. derivative, no commercial. Yeah. Okay. All but right. do you actually want to share your creative, uh, your micro credentials on Creative Commons? I, I, I'm involved in micro credential mm -hmm. for many, many years, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember the policy. We have the Sejahtera micro credential and the non sejahtera micro credential. Sejahtera is available on free basis, right? Yeah. So the one on free basis, I think they are suitable to be put on Creative Commons license because they will broaden the distribution of your work. I see. Okay. Understood, yeah. Prof. But, like, but uh -uh. again, like I mentioned, choose the most restrictive, no derivatives, no commercial, because what we want is essentially for the work to be circulated to others to ensure that you know we gain um, distri um, distributorship rather than anything. Yeah? I see. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Prof. Noted. Assalamualaikum. Right. For research data, there's a question from Azna. For research data, what is suitable CC license to choose from? Um, I, I leave it to the individual researchers. I really leave it to individual researchers. Um, I, I, I really believe that the most restrictive is the most suitable because everybody uh, cares about um, getting their work to be disseminated as widely as possible. But when somebody writes on your work, I mean, it's not nice at all. Nobody wants to be simply written by others for free. Your main objective is for your data to be wide, to be widely distributable, right? And that can be achieved through the most restrictive CC license. Ah, look like looks like we're ending early. <laughs> yes, bro. No more question. Okay, I would I would remind. Uh, Who are the main all... participants actually? These are all librarians. Um, not only librarian, prof. Uh, we do have okay. um academics and researchers also in okay. this session. Right. We do have one hundred and fifteen participants join your session, prof. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Assalamualaikum, Prof. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, okay. Uh, my name is Irmi Prof. Uh, about the research data management. Uh, actually, uh, we we already have uh, installed uh, a research data registry uh, called Dataverse. Uh, we actually it is in under proof of concept first. We would like uh, to get uh, volunteers from the researchers who would like uh, to share their research data in the platform, in the research data repository. Okay, uh, with Dataverse, uh, it included the terms uh, together. And in the terms, it the license and data use agreement, uh, it provides uh, CCO uh, 1.0 
and CC by 4.0 and then uh, we can custom data set terms. Okay, so if we were to select the 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 list that, that you mentioned just now, is it uh, okay if we select CC by 4.0 for all the research data uh, that uh, the the that we CCBY upload. CCBY is actually um the most broadest right all you require is only attribution okay so yeah uh, so we should select CC 0 1.0 1.0 that one you put it out you dedicate it totally to the public right uh, correct bro. correct correct bro. I will share the, the term at the chat at the chat box. Mm -hmm. A moment, bro. Now for CCO 1.0, you dedicate it to the work to the public domain, waiving all your rights. It means you waive all your rights over the data. Okay. <clears throat> that may be useful to your research community because they can do what they like with the data. But if the data is then used to develop... Okay, so you are sharing something with CCBY 4.0. See, okay, hold on. Eh? Let me go one by one. Now, CCO, with CCO, you dedicate your work to the public domain totally. You have waived all your rights over it. And anybody can use your data for whatever purposes. They can spin it off, um, expand on it, um, and, and, and whatnot. Um, this is a bit like uh, the arguments that people have against artificial intelligence, right? The fact that this artificial intelligence using your copyright and develop derivatives out of it in the context of text and data mining, right? So you basically dedicate it. Anybody can do whatever they like with it. That is CC 1.0. But CCB, uh, CCO 1.0. But CCBY 4.0 is Creative Commons license, which is the broadest. All you ask is um, attribution. For CCO, you can ask or not attribution. It doesn't matter because you basically say wakaf the ilmu to everybody. They attribute to you or not, it doesn't matter, right? After all, in research data, they are just data, right? Data is not protected under copyright unless it is compiled and it turns into charts or statistics, uh, into something which amounts to expression, it is protected under copyright. So you can dedicate totally to others using CCO 1.0 if you want. You can also uh, dedicate it to others CCBY 4.0. It's also fine because CCBY 4.0 uh, sort of like mandates attribution to you as the original author. But for CCBY 4.0, there must be some copyright work implicated. If there's no copyright work at all, because it's just data sets, right? Just data sets, then you can dedicate it through CCO 1.0. I hope that's clear. Am I making you more confusing? Okay, bro. Thank you, bro. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So in your custom data set terms, what do you... Um, what kind of terms are you incorporating here? As for the Give custom, uh, as for the custom data sets, we are not actually uh, use the function, use the option yet. Yeah. Uh, so yes. right now we are focusing CC zero and CCBY pro. Uh, yeah, for CCBY, like I mentioned. There must be a copyright work in the first place for you to license it by way of CCBY. But for CCO, it can cover just data sets, you know, data from my survey. It's just data, data, research data, 
which has yet to be turned into expression which is protectable under copyright. Because copyright only protects compilation of data, not data alone. Okay, bro. Thank you, bro. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Assalamualaikum, Prof. Prof. Okay. Assalamualaikum, Prof. My name is Anissa Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Prof, uh, um, is there any relation or related between the CC license and Bern Convention, Prof? Bern Convention is one of the treaty that the community has entered into and it is administered by WIPO, World Intellectual Property Organization. Um, WIPO is a sister organization of the United Nations. Under WIPO, there are a number of treaties, number of treaties. Bern is the most established one because it was concluded in 1887, right? More than what, uh, centuries ago. And it has many, many uh, member countries uh, because Bern is the basic threshold of standard on copyright law. Now, Creative Commons is just a platform allowing you to share your work on a licensed basis, right? Um, while Burn come up with standards of protection on copyright, and that somehow influence legislation around the world on copyright, Creative Commons is entirely different. It is a tool or a platform for you to share your work on a licensed basis to others, right? So essentially, it's a way for you to commercialize, monetize, or exploit your work, right? Exploitation of your work. Now you have this copyright work. What do you do with it? Okay, what do you do with it? All right? Surely you want it to be published so that others can enjoy your work. Uh, that is the traditional way um, of making your work available to others, publishing or distribution agreement, okay? But in a digital world, right? In a digital world, and your work is in a digital format, right? There are many platforms that allow your work to be shared to others, right? With CC license, your work is shared to others with certain restriction, depending on the license that you choose. So it gives you some form of protection, okay? Some form of protection. You remember that girl, right? from Australia, whose photo has been taken and put out on a huge billboard in Australia, right? She's not Australian, she's from America, right? So, oh, wow, huge billboard with my photo on it, right? But that photo was, you know, put on Flickr, on CCBY. So it's very broad. So in the future, you have to be careful when you share photos on some of these online platforms, make sure that it is not CCBY. Because for all you know, you may think that nobody will pay interest in you, right? But there are many, many commercial companies that need common images, you know, for their advertisements, right? For their advertisements. And, and of course, nowadays with artificial intelligence, and that, that's the discourse that is going on now, you know, this artificial intelligence machine not only um, scrap data, but they also scrap artwork, um, photographs, music files and churn it and turn it into others and make money out of it, you know? So, uh, of course, you have to think of how to protect yourself and your work as well in the digital environment. So that's what CC license allows you to do. Is that clear? Yes, clear, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank you very much. Thank you, bro. Right, uh, Suryati, I saw your question. Can you share how the CC license better than other ways to share copyright works? Uh, I I can't read the full full one. What's the question again, Siti Aziza? Check just now. By Suryati, the last uh, question. Suryati, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. Can you read it can, can you share how the CC license better than the other ways to share copyrighted work? I, I guess 
how the CC license is better than other ways? Eventually, it depends on your intention, your niyat. Okay? When you create the work, where, what is your niyat? Do you want to make money as much as possible from that work? If you want to make as much money as possible from that work, you go through the traditional channel, find a publisher who is willing to publish your work and pay you for that work. And of course, that doesn't work out with anybody. Doesn't work out with everybody. Not everybody had that negotiating power with the publisher. But if you feel that you want to make your name first and you want to share your work with others first, particularly like people like me in academics, you know, I don't make money at all from my textbook, from my casebook, not at all. Unlike J.K. Rowling, you know, who makes tons of money, you know, from her novel. That's entirely different, right? So if you if you feel that what you your need is actually to share and collaborate. And, and use your work as a means to uh, enrich this course, a discussion, an advancement of knowledge in a particular area, then share it on CC license or dedicate that data to uh, the public in the public domain. You know how difficult it is to collect data, especially in this world, even after post pandemic as well, it is really, really hard to collect uh, data through surveys. And those data sets are very, very useful for other researchers, particularly in Malaysia, where it's very, very hard to get research information, information which is useful for your research from government entities, from private bodies, and even from other researchers, right? So if you feel that your NIA is to, and to, uh, to ensure that your work become a precursor for other works, then do it. Dedicate it to the public and dedicating it to the public can be in many forms. I mean, you can use by way of a CC license or you can simply put it out for CCO if you want. Okay, thank you, Prof, for the uh, answer. Uh, okay, do you have any other question? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ah, yes. Yes, wa alaikum assalam. Yes, tafadal. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Mandiha, for your comprehensive and uh, very uh, analytical uh, presentation. I just want to ask you a question, you know. Uh, Islamically speaking, uh, when we talk about the knowledge, whatever we know, and that knowledge is beneficial to the society, as a Muslim, uh, we are supposed to spread it to others so that they will be able to benefit from it. So when we talk about the copyright, when we are making something contribution in terms of knowledge or whatever information we are, you know, coming up, so it has to be accessible to the society so that the people can benefit from it. So this is our uh, I mean, duty, responsibility to spread the knowledge. So now uh, we can see there's a kind of contradiction with regard to the copyright and also the spread of knowledge. So how do you reconcile this with the Islamic principle proof? Thank you very much. Did you get my... Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank you very much. Okay. Hayatullah. Now, in fact, copyright also serves the dissemination of the knowledge to the public. Because with copyright, you know, you have to remember the history of copyright, why copyright came into place. Um, this is to ensure that works are being disseminated and distributed to others through publishing agreements, right? True publishing agreements. And of course, the publisher, when they publish their work, they, that incurs money. So the publisher also need to get remuneration from the effort of publishing the work. And of course, you know, authors themselves as well, they have dedicated their life writing the book. You know, I take at least one year to write one book. Very thick case book. Takes me one year. I work day and night read up materials, digest information, and really understand it for me to be 
enable and for me to be able to communicate it to others. So all this dedication requires support and that support comes in the form of financial remuneration and you get this through copyright. So through copyright, there's a pre co co benefit, you know, benefit to the author, benefit to the user, benefit to the public because the work is now distributed to the public. Public can have access to the work, can read it, can enjoy it, you know, from your effort. And of course, you also need subsistence and you get that from your copyright royalty. So for me, copyright is not against advancement of knowledge. It's actually in line with advancement of knowledge. And if you feel that you don't care for the financial remuneration and what you care is just the work to be distributed to others freely and others can um, you know, expand the knowledge uh, even to the extent of developing um, other work and make money out of it. If you really want to dedicate your work for free, you can also dedicate it for free. Um, and you can do it by way of this site, the license CC or, or even CCBY. So there's no nothing un-Islamic about it. In fact, when I first heard Prof. Lawrence Lessey at the launching of uh, Creative Commons, and I thought, oh, that is very Islamic, you know, very Islamic, because you basically facilitate the sharing of the information and the sharing of knowledge in a digital platform, because everybody's comfortable with digital platform, right? In a digital platform where you don't really need to know each other, right? In a traditional copyright world, you need to know the author. You need to negotiate with the author personally because it's his right. But in a Creative Commons license, you don't even need to know each other. You just, um, you know, release your work to be shared by others for free and others can do that for free as well. So it gives you more option on how you can share your work. You can share it through copyright because you also you know, need subsistence to finance yourself or you can share it on Creative Commons license um, and because your main need is actually to share the knowledge. But whatever it is, copyright is not against investment of knowledge because copyright essentially ensure the work is shared to others on a widely basis. Without copyright, people will keep it to yourself. If I'm worried that my work is going to be copied by others so easily, I just keep it in my drawer. I wouldn't even share it to others. And how is that advancing knowledge? which is required in the Quran. It is not at all, all right? So for me, both copyright and creative commons um, actually advances the injunction to share knowledge and distribute knowledge in Islam. Okay, thank you so much, Prof, for the uh, answer. Um, I think there is no more question from the uh, participants. Okay, uh, thank you to all the participants for your support and cooperation in this session. Uh, just a gentle reminder for everybody to fill in the uh, attendance and also the survey form, uh, the link uh, already available in the chat box. Okay, um, <clears throat> uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, on behalf of Dar Al Hikmah Library, IIUM, I would like to thank you all for joining us in this sharing session. Inshallah, the sharing session will be available at the IIUM Library official YouTube channel. You may refer to it after this. Okay, uh, now let's uh, take a group photo. So all the participants, you may turn on your camera and you are recommended to use the program background provided uh, as available in the chat box. We have seven pages. Alhamdulillah. So, uh, who is going to take the photo? The secretary? Yes, yeah. we, are, we are taking the photos. I think we can one, two, three. Okay, for the page one.
We cannot hear the sound of uh, secretariat. Then, not yet. Can I assist? Okay. Then, fish one. Fish smile. One, two, three is new. Okay. Uh, Page two or one, two, three. Page three, one, two, three. Page four, one, two, three, Page five, one, two, three, Snow. All right, thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Okay, once again, we would like to express our heartfelt gratitude to Professor Dr. Ida Madiha and all participants for your presence today. We also would like to apologize for any shortcomings and inconveniences caused. Hope to meet you again. Uh, let us end our session with the recitation of Tasbih Kafara and Surah Al Ansh. Okay, with that, wa billahi tawfiq wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And thank you. Thank you so much, Prophet. Thank you very much, my pleasure. Thank you very much, my pleasure.